Hello, welcome to the FlexMLS webinar, Contact Portal Agent Side. This is the second webinar in the portal series. In this webinar, we will step through the process of creating a contact portal from beginning to end and the different ways you can enable a portal on a contact. So let's get started. Simply put, the contact portal gives your customer a username and password that allows them to log in and manage listings that you send them. This includes the ability to save listings to a collection, send you general messages and messages on listings from within their portal, and hide listings they do not want to see. The contact cannot access your FlexMLS account nor change searches you have saved for them. Before you enable a contact portal, you must enable your agent portal. If you need to learn what that is and how to create it, review the video titled Portal, Agent Contact Portal Preferences Number 1. You can find that that's located here on our home screen, www.metromls.com. Hover over Member Support. Click on FlexMLS Video Library. Oh, I'm sorry. Click on FlexMLS Webinars. And it's this one right here, Agent Contact Portal Preferences. So you want to start with that one. So getting back to where we were, the first way I'm going to demonstrate how to create a contact portal is on a brand new contact. So we're going to start off at Contact Management. So Contacts, Contact Management. And here I will enter in a uh, new contact. So I'm going to click on Add Contact, type in a name for the contact and an email address. All right, now before I save this contact file, first thing I want to uh, make you aware of, this first position for email, this is considered the primary email address, this first box here. Your contacts will log in to their portal. Their username will be the primary email address. So the email address that's here is the one that they will log in with. So be aware of that as you enter in your information. You can add additional email addresses to a contact file, but the portal will will only recognize the primary email address. So if there's multiple users, um, for example, a husband and wife that are going to access the portal, they will share the login. All right. So moving down here, I'm not going to select this box, but I'm just going to tell you this is one of the ways that you can create a portal for the contact. Putting a check in this box and then saving the contact file will send an invite with the portal login name and password that will be automatically sent out to that customer. Now we live in a day and age where people are connected to their devices, mobile phones, tablets, laptops are sitting at their desk. They could be having access to their email account. So this goes out pretty, it goes out immediately. Um, they'll receive it on their end based on how their email client processes their email address, but they could log into this account in seconds. At this point in time, you haven't even gotten a chance to save the search to the customer, so be aware of that. If you do check this, once you hit add contact, that portal invite is sent to that customer. They may be able, they may log into their portal before you even get a chance to finish saving the search to their file, so keep that in mind. All right, so I've got the email address and the contact name. I'm going to click on Add Contact. All righty, now I'm going to create the search for this customer, what my customer's property search is. So I'll switch to the Searches Subscription tab. Underneath the Searches box, I'll click the Add button. On the Attach Save Search box, I'm going to click on Create New Full Search to create the search for my customer. So we'll do Single Family Active. I'll do Waukesha, Brookfield, three to four bedrooms, one and a half to two and a half baths, and two and a half garage. So that's my customer search. All right, so once you've completed entering in the parameters for your customer search, you will click on Save Search. This will take you to the Save Search screen. In this search, you give your search a name, so I'm just going to Name it something that is indicative of the uh, search that I did. 
All right, search description. If you decide to use this box, it is optional. Um, the message, whatever you type in here, will be viewable on that contacts uh, portal dashboard. So keep that in mind. Usually when I train this class and I talk about this box, I usually say if a customer has you looking for a really detailed search, they've got a really detailed search parameters, and you kind of want to make notes about the search, that's a good use of this box. So I'm just going to type in this is what I entered in search description box. So we can remember that. All right. Moving on down the screen, after you've given your search a name, and you may want to enter something in this box, you don't have to. Next, here's your the customer that I created, portal contact. All right. So now in this save search screen, I am going to create my customer's portal, which is going to send the canned message out that you saw viewable. If you uh, watch the video for the portal preferences, you'll know what that uh, the canned message is. Um, once I hit create, and this box is selected by default. Send my default invoice to this user. That's that canned message that we saw over in the uh, portal preferences. So I click create. That box disappears. That means that that portal invite has gone out to that customer. And I'll log into my email address so you can see that. And just to complete this, I'll save the search and return to contact management. So I created the customer and I created the search for the customer, my customer search, what they're looking for. If I'd like to add another search, maybe they want to check out a condo search, I can do the process again of add, create new full search and go on for there. Now any searches that you have saved to the searches box of that customer's contact management file will be viewable in your customer's portal. All right, so I'm going to switch screens here and go into my email client so you can see what that portal invite looks like. And this will be what your customer gets. All right, here it is, and this is the way it comes into your customer's email box. A portal has been created for you, so the customer will open it, just like I'm about to do, and here's that canned message. This will be your name, not mine. So you, as the agent, has invited you to connect, and this is the canned message. I've set up a customized website called a portal for you. Using this site, you can keep track of listings, send me messages, and keep track of listings you like and dislike. Follow the link below and enter your login information to begin using your portal. Once you are on the website, be sure to save the address as a favorite so you can easily visit again. In the lower right panel of the home screen, you will be able to change your password to whatever you like. So. And this is your pro this would be your profile information. So your customer would click this connect button. It'll open up a new screen, and this is the login screen that they will get. Okay? So if this customer I've already have an account, but if the system, our Flex Mail server, does not recognize this email address, you'll be on this sign up tab. So your customer would enter in that primary email address. Sometimes it's pre-populated in there, they'll type in their first and their last name. The asterisk indicates that these are required fields in order for them to log into their portal. Um, and this, they will create their own password, so you don't have to create a password for them. They'll put in their password here, type it again to uh, confirm it. Once they hit sign up, it will log them into their portal. Okay, I'm just going to pop back over here to my tab. All right. So that's the canned message that goes out to the customer where they're able, how they're able to log into their portal. Okay. All right. So I'm going to switch to the portal tab here of this customer. So when you first set up a customer portal, this tab will be pretty sparse. All right. So I'll go over some of the settings here. This is letting you know that the client portal is on. This is your portal URL. So any contacts that you have with an active portal will be logging into this portal URL with their own unique user ID, username, and password. Um, this says no listings automatically sent to this customer, this contact, because I don't have a subscription set up on this search. See? And you don't, subscriptions can work with the portal or they can stand alone. Same thing with the portal. It can work with the subscription or it can stand alone. That'll be up to you. 
I'll move back here. Every portal comes with the default four listing collections. Also, we call them cards here too. Um, the saved cart will allow a customer to save listings to their carts, ones that they like. Um, the cart icon is indicated with a star, and we'll get to that in a little bit where I'll show you. They're also able to rate listings within that saved cart. Um, they can give it anywhere between a one and a three star rating based upon their interest. One star, mildly interested. Two stars, moderately interested. Three stars, highly interested. The recommended card is an agent-controlled card. You can only add listings to this card. If there are listings within a customer's search that you'd like to recommend to them, so kind of paying special attention, um, you can add them to the card. To add a listing to the recommended card, you can do that by going to the Searches Subscription tab, and for the search that you'd like to recommend the listings for, you may have several searches here, make sure that that search is highlighted. When you hit View All, this little suitcase icon is how you recommend a listing just by clicking it. It'll turn it blue. That's all you have to do. Okay, if you go, oops, I didn't mean to recommend that listing. I want to do another one. You just deselect it to take the recommend off. But this is how you recommend a listing in a customer's uh, portal. Um, you just select the listing. You view, oops, sorry. You uh, navigate to the Searches Subscription tab for that customer and make sure that you view all on the search and that'll open you up where you can use the icons. Okay, I'm gonna navigate back to the portal tab here. The hidden cart, this is a customer control cart. Customer, the contact can hide listings that they don't wanna see. If there's something that they don't like, it's a universal no symbol. It's a, the circle with the slash in it. They just click it on there and it puts it in the hidden cart. It doesn't remove it totally from the portal. It removes it from their search and if they have, um, a subscription running, if that, subscri if that listing was a part of a subscription, when they check their news feed, they won't see it there either. It'll only be viewable if they click on the hidden cart to look at those listings. To take a listing out of any of the cards, you just deselect the icon for that card. Lastly is the hidden by agent. This is similar to the hidden cart, except you as the agent controls this cart. So if there's listings that you don't want your customer to see for whatever reason, again, you go to the searches subscriptions tab, you select the search if you've got more than one, you hit view all. Once it opens up the listing, you just hit the universal no symbol and that will hide that listing from the customer search or their news feed. If you want to take it out, deselect it. And as you're selecting the cart icons over here, you'll see the numbers update automatically. All right, I'm going to click on return to contact management and go back to the portal tab. All right, these little clear links here, you can clear the contents of any card. So whatever listings it says that are in that card, if you hit clear, it takes them all out. Not select listings, but it takes them all out. If you wanted to remove individual listings from a card, you must open up that card and deselect the icon that's associated with that card. I typically tell agents for the contact cards, hidden and saved, let them them control what goes on in there unless they ask you. The recommended and the hidden by agent, those two cards, you're the only one that has control of that. The contact does not. So if you put something in recommended or hidden, the customer can go and click on that cart and see the listings in that cart. They may ask you, oh, hey, I kind of like that one. Can you make sure that is viewable in my search? Sure. Then you open up the cart and you deselect the icon. Next is the portal activity. This keeps track of when your customer logs into their portal. So it'll show the last login and once they log in, you'll see a date and a timestamp over here. This little checkbox is also associated with the login. Send a message to me when the portal contact logs into the portal. So by this being selected, and it's selected by default, whenever that customer logs into their portal, it will send you an email. So-and-so has logged into their portal. If you've got a customer that's going in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out, you're gonna get an email for each time that they log in. So if you don't want it, deselect it. You can still see when the customer logs in 
by navigating here, or there is a column that you can add to this view up here for last login where you can see it all in the list format. Next is the portal account. There's an invite to portal button. Let's say your customer accidentally deleted that initial invite to the portal and they say, I can't remember what the portal URL is. Can you resend it to me? Sure. So you can hit invite to portal and it'll pop up this box and send out that same canned message. Okay. Which includes the link to the portal. I'm just going to cancel that. And then lastly is the change settings link. This is where you can change the settings for this particular contact. So over here in preferences, portal preferences are the global settings. They affect all of your customers. So if you have a particular report type, maybe to see videos, maybe to see, you know, anything else, there everything's going to pull from this unless you change it on the individual contact. So this contact will not obey the preferences that are in here if you change them. So let's take a look at that. So when I click on change settings, these are the settings for this particular contact. So let's say typically this, basically the settings that you will see here will mimic what you have over in the general portal preferences. So this first one, exclude these listing statuses from appearing in the news feed unless the status is included in the search. This pertains to the subscription email. So in the global portal preferences, I have set to exclude any pending listings, any closed listings, or expired listings. Let's say this particular uh, customer wants to see when a listing closes that they got previously sent. They can, you can deselect it for this customer. So now this particular customer, if a listing that they had received at one time in their subscription email was active and they'd like to see, you know, when it goes sold, they'll see it. All right, the next section, listing links from email show. This is again pertaining to the subscription uh, emails. So when the subscription emails uh, come to your customer, you can choose those subscription links to show the news feed, which is the history of the previously sent listings up to 50. You can show just the listings that were emailed for that email update. So it won't be the history of the listings. Whatever listings were updated, might be a handful of listings, maybe it's just one listing. When they click on that listing, that subscription email link, it will only show the updated listings for that email. Or you can choose for that email subscription to open up to their saved search. So whatever search you've got saved on this customer that that subscription is running on, it'll open up to that saved search. So the new or recently changed listings will be at the top of the list. So whatever generated that email that triggered that subscription email, and then it'll show the rest of the listings that are within their saved search. Okay. All right, I'm just going to switch that back. Next, the start position, that's the list tab. This controls the view. This controls how the listings are sorted. This controls the information that you see on the listings. So this applies to the detail tab. What data sheet or report would you like to see? Did you want to include the mortgage calculator? This is the photos tab. If there's videos or virtual tours attached to the listing, there will be a link for those. If you prefer not for this particular customer to get them, take them off. Next is the map tab and then the messages tab. The messages tab allows the customer to send list, uh, messages to you in regards to a particular listing. Okay, so once you tweak your settings for this particular customer, you just click Save Settings. All right, and the last thing that I'm going to show you here on the Portal tab for this customer is the View Portal link. So when you click View Portal, it'll open a read-only version of that contact's portal. All right, so it opens up here and it's opening up to the search. So this is this particular customer. Now, how the portal opens up depends on what they've done in their portal. So since this is a brand new portal and my customer hasn't gone in and selected or favorited anything, this, the portal will open up to 
the search that I have saved on this customer. If I have multiple searches saved to this customer, it will open to the first one in the list over here, okay? These are the cart icons, so if they've marked anything as saved, I could see it here. Um, I, if they marked anything as hidden, if I've recommended anything, or hidden by agent. So you would have a little number over here and you can click right on that. If there was a subscription set up on this customer, at the top here, underneath your profile information, you'd see an entry labeled news feed. Okay, now the reason why I call it read only, the, about 90% of this is what, um, what you're seeing is what the customer sees. I'm just going to switch to home here real quick and go to the dashboard. Any messages that are sent to the customer between you and the customer, this is blank for you. It will be not visible um, while you're viewing the portal through contact management. But if I was the customer and I'm logged in as my actual self, I would see all my messages that I went back and forth with, with through you. Okay, and then this is just a help file when your customer logs in and they switch to the dashboard using that button. This is just like a video tutorial of tutorial how to go through the portal and the PDF guide. Now what I'm going to do since this portal isn't, you know, I just created it, I'm going to close out of this portal and I'm actually going to navigate to um, a contact that I use a lot for my testing. So I'm going to use this contact here, Barclays. Now, when you see the portal tab for this customer, you can tell that, you know, we've been doing stuff here. So here, you'll see the carts. There's an extra cart here called Chef's Kitchen, and you go, well, what's that about? Your customers have the ability to create their own carts, their own collections within their portal. So if you ever come to here and see the listing collections and you see something in addition to these four standard ones, that's something that your customer has created. And I will review um, that option in the uh, contact portal contact side video. Next is the portal activity. So the last time that this customer logged in, last active, You'll see that was today sometime. Um, moving on down here, these are the listings that were viewed by the customer. So basically what it does, the portal kind of tracks a hit count um, of how customers are moving around in their portal and what listings they're looking at most frequently. So this listing on Gilbert Avenue has gotten the most views. And then there goes in rating all the way down. So if I wanted to look at the listings that were viewed by this customer, I have a link here, view all 85. Or view whatever number it is that your customer has. So these are all of the listings that that customer has looked at within their portal that they've touched, that they've gone to the detail tab and navigated through the sheet. Okay, I'm going to return to contact management. All right, this little portal save search, ignore that. That's part of a, a testing um, function that we're doing with an, uh, with an update with the portal that's, that's not relevant at this moment in time, okay? Now, um, in addition, now I told you that you could, instead of getting the message sent to you when this customer logs into the portal, you can add that last login column here. How you can edit this view that you see right here, you can do that by going up to advanced and customize contact list. So these are the columns I currently have added there. So let's say I wanted to tweak it. I wanted to get rid of some columns, maybe add some columns. So I'm going to get rid of my subscription columns and then I want to add the uh, last login column. So I'll click the plus sign for anything up here. X's mean you already have it. Plus sign means you can add that column. Um, and let's see, I want to add the save. Maybe I want to add what they have in their save column there. All right. So once I've added the columns here, maybe I want to move them in a particular order. So let's say I want the last login a little bit closer to if the portal is active or not. So I'm just going to hit this little arrow and scoosh it over that way. And then I'm going to move my save so I can see what's in their save collection there. And once I'm satisfied, I'll hit Save Changes. And there it is. 
So there's the name for your customer, the primary email address, primary phone number. If the portal is active or not, if it's not, it'll say off. That just applies to the portal, not the subscription. The last time that they logged in, so I can easily see it here without getting nagged with the emails. Um, anything that they have saved in their carts. So I can click this 10 and open up to my customer's saved cart what they have saved in here. And you'll notice that there, there's the stars, so that where they've got their high interest, moderate interest, low interest. So you'll notice, you know, well, maybe why are there a lot of solds in there? When your customers save a listing to a collection, it hangs on to that listing. So any changes that go on in the flex side, the actual um, agent version of the flex side, will the portal collection will reflect that. So if they happen to, you know, go into their save cart one day, one day it was active, they go in the next day and it's like, oh, shoot, it's sold. It, it retains the history. Everything is real time. All right, so I'm just going to return to contact management. All right, this column, the date created, lets me know the date that I created this customer's file and the last time that I made a change to that customer's file, last modified. All right. All right, before we leave here, we're going to go here to um, the Messages function. In the Messages tab, this also archives the messages that you have gone back and forth with that contact through their portal. So if you're looking for a particular message that a portal customer has sent you, this is one of the places that you can go. Now messages that go back and forth between you and that portal customer, they go to two places. One goes to your email address of record that you have listed on your Flex account. So if you don't log into Flex, any day, but someone sends you a portal message, it comes to you in your email, and you can reply back to it from that email. You don't have to log into Flex to back and forth with the messages, okay? Same thing with the uh, customer. You send the customer a message through their portal, it goes to their portal, it goes to their email address. So from here, the default check is send the message to me when Barclay logs into the portal. Again, you can take that off. These are all the messages that my customer sent me on listings. So it'll have the listing here. And there's a list number so I can reply back if I'd like to. Okay, I'll cancel that. Or if you just wanted to write a quick note to that customer. So maybe you're not in your email client, but it's more convenient to write a note here. This doesn't have to be about a listing. You can click there and say, hey, I'm having a barbecue for all my customers. You know, it's this date, this time. Come on over. You're welcome. Plenty to eat and drink. I'm just going to cancel that. All right. So this is the messages tab. Next is the listing notes. Your customer can make notes on listings within their portal and you can view these notes. Again, I'll review that function on the video called Contact Portal uh, Contact Side. So here, these are notes that my customer made on listings. So on this particular listing, they said it's a lot of grass to cut. Okay, if you want to add to this note, you can. It might kind of freak them out because in their mind, if they think they're making notes on a listing, it's private. But you can read the notes. It's kind of up to you if you want to um, discuss with them about going back and forth with the notes. Um, another one here tells you the list number, the date they made it on. I don't like being on the corner. So you get the gist of it. These are the listing notes. Okay. Now, another way that you can create um, a portal on a contact, if you have a customer that already exists, I showed you how to create a, a portal on a brand new customer. So let's say you had a customer um, that was already in existence that didn't have a portal. I'm going to switch. I'm just going to add somebody real quick. Um, so we'll pretend that this person has been in our system for a while. All right, so let's say this customer that I just added, I'd like to, they hadn't been on a portal, and I want to add them to a portal. So I will come into contact management, select that customer, 
they would be off. Go to the portal tab, and this would be selected already, and I would just hit create portal account, and it'll send out that can message, and then this shows up. So this is how, one of the ways that you can create it on an existing contact file. Just selecting the contact, selecting portal, and hitting that send invite button. Another way is through advanced. Now here you'll see two entries. So when I hover over advanced, you'll see two entry. Create portal accounts and create portal accounts with invite. Selecting create portal accounts will turn the portal on for all of your customers in one fell swoop. It does not send out the canned message for the invite. You would have to manually go into each customer, go to their portal tab, and hit that send invite button for them. Okay, um, a reason for doing that, maybe you wanted to turn them all on, but maybe you had some things that you wanted to do, or you want whatever it was, you wanted to turn them all on at once, and then send the portal invite one at a time as you got their searches together, or whatever it is that you wanted to do. The other one, create portal accounts with invite, turns on the portal for all of your contacts, and sends out a CAM message all at the same time. So if you do it that way, be prepared to get maybe a few emails or a few phone calls at the same time if you these people that got it has questions about it. So they're all going to get it in one fell swoop. You could get several emails or phone calls or both at the same time. So be a little bit careful with that one. All right. The last thing that I'd like to show you in regards to the portal is how to um, work in the portal from the search results screen. So we're going to get this contact management, the customer, our portal customer, off our minds. Let's say it's a different day, different customer. We're doing a search for something, or maybe I'm doing a CMA. You know, it could be for anything. So I'm just going to pull up search results screen here. Oh, let's see, I'll do walk, white, Wauwatosa. Three to four bedroom. So for whatever reason, I'm doing a search. You know, I'm on the search results screen doing my thing. So let's say my customer, um, the one that we were we just created, wanted a Brookfield search. So as I'm going through, and I go, hey, you know, this is this is not that far off from what the area my customer wanted is only a few blocks over. It has everything that they like. Maybe they'd be open to this Wauwatosa listing. Now you had the Brookfield search set up for that customer and as you see this listing wouldn't have come into that Brookfield search because we're in Tosa but because you think it's a few blocks over it but it's the house that you think they might like you want to drop this into their portal. You can do this from the search results screen with this link. Work on behalf of a contact. So when I click that link, it's asking me, okay, what's the contact's name? So I type in their name. How about the frat? So they come up. So I select them. Then I hit OK. So now I am within this customer's portal. This looks a little bit familiar. There's their Brookfield search. So now this listing, I want to drop into their portal. I can do that by popping it into a collection. I'll put it in the recommended one, since these two are, are the ones they control. So I'll select that icon and put it into their recommended cart. I'm just going to grab the list number here. So after I've dropped that listing, and I can do it on several listings, it doesn't have to be limited to one, but once I'm done placing the listing in their recommended cart, in their portal, now I want to back out of their portal. To stop this portal action, you've got the stop sign. When I left click on that, that stops it, I'm back to where I was. So now I can go to this customer once I'm done with whatever it is that I was doing on the screen here, so I can shoot on over to this customer and write them a quick message. Hey, you know, recommend it. You know, there was a quick, there was a listing from Tosa that I dropped into your cart. It's, I know it's a few blocks out of the area, but it looks like it's what you wanted. That's beautiful, okay? And then you could just hit send message, and the message is sent. So that message goes to the customer telling them, you know, this is what you did, and, you know, check it out and tell them what you, they think about it. Okay. 
All right, so this will conclude our webinar for the contact portal agent side. Um, please review the webinars that will be coming after this in the orders. The next one I recommend is the contact portal contact side. That one will review what the customer sees when they log into their portal and how things work over there. Thank you.